Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Moritz. I am a developer relations engineer at Definity. And today we want to deploy the Uniswap interface in a canister on the internet computer using Juno. And this step makes Uniswap fully decentralized as not only the backend is served from a blockchain, but the front end as well. So you might wonder now what is Juno? So Juno is an open source blockchain as a service platform that makes building decentralized apps faster and easier than ever before. It's similar to Firebase or Amplify, but it runs entirely on the blockchain. And what it does is it allows developers to focus on the front end of the application, abstracting away the complexity of a smart contract backend. But you can also host static front ends with Juno. And this is what we are going to do today. So Juno actually has a pretty great documentation that we are following for this tutorial. And you can check it out at juno.build. So let's start building. So the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to hit up the documentation to figure out how we actually going to get started. And the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to create a so-called satellite. A satellite is a container for your application that runs fully on chain. So it's basically a smart contract. It can contain the data, the storage, um, the application bundle and assets of your project. And each satellite is dedicated to a single application. So the first step we have to do is that we have to open the Juno console. And here we actually have to log in. And we are going to log in using Internet Identity. And Internet Identity, in case you don't know, is a privacy enhancing authentication framework to applications on the Internet computer. If you want to learn more about Internet Identity, you can head over to internetcomputer.org and then here under Learn, you can click on Identity on the Internet Computer and this will give you an explanation of what Internet Identity actually is. It's pretty cool. Alright, so um, we are going to create a new account for this tutorial. So I already have two um, anchors, but I'm going to create a new one. So I'm basically going to create a new Internet Identity. And therefore I have to create a pass key and for that I'm going to use my fingerprint sensor on my MacBook. You can read up on the specifics on how this works uh, in the website I just mentioned. And I'm going to copy this. This is important, you have to remember this to access your account. It's not confidential but um, yeah, you have to remember it. All right, so now we have an account with Juno. And as I mentioned, the first thing we are going to do is that we're going to launch a new satellite. So it's pretty easy. We just click on launch a new satellite. We enter a name. I'm going to call this um, Uniswap. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to create a satellite. It's going to take a little while. This in the background spins up a new canister or a new smart contract running on the internet computer that is then being used as your satellite. So now it's asking me, what do I want to do next? And I want to use a static website. So I'm going to click that. I'm hitting continue. And now it's actually giving me the instructions um, that I have to follow to actually do that, to actually deploy my static website. So the first thing we have to do is we have to install the Juno build CLI. So let's do that. Heading over to my terminal, I just copied the command, paste it, wait for a little bit, and that's that. So next command is we have to log in. So we basically have to tell Juno that this terminal or this um, installation of, of Juno that we just um, did actually is allowed to make changes to the satellite that we created. So we're going to run the command Juno login and now it's asking us 
what satellite would we want to authenticate to and we want to authenticate to the Uniswap front end and we are going to say that this is the yeah, DFX identity that we are going to use. And we are authorized. Pretty easy um, and pretty cool. So the next step here is now that we can actually run Juno deploy. Um, but we don't have anything to deploy yet. So what we're going to do is we are going to head over to the um, Uniswap interface on GitHub. We are going to clone that. Might take a little while depending on your connection speed. Then we are going to change in the directory and then we are going to head back to Juno to copy the last command which is Juno deploy. And this is pretty neat now because there's actually a wizard for that. So it first ask me what is the satellite I want to link with this app. So the satellite I want to link, we only have one, it's Uniswap. Then what's the name or path of the build source folder of your dApp? In the case of Uniswap, it is actually built. So the output of the build command will be in the build folder. And this might change from front end to front end. So depending on your setup, you have to change this. But we are keeping the default value, which is built. And yeah, that makes sense um, because I didn't build yet. So I'm going to install all the dependencies first. And now I'm going to build. This might take a little while. So grab a coffee. I'm going to uh, cut this out in the video, but yeah, if you're doing this by yourself, it might take a while. All right, the build is done. So now we're going to rerun the Juno deploy command. Hopefully it works now that we have the build folder. And it seems like it does. So now Juno is actually uploading the um, build folder into the satellite. And once that process is done, we can access that Uniswap front end that is being deployed inside a canister because Juno itself, the Juno satellite itself runs in a canister. Um, and that's pretty cool in my opinion, because a cool thing about the internet computer is that canisters or smart contracts running on the internet computer can serve content through HTTP. So canisters are accessible with a web browser without the need to download any additional software or a wallet or anything. And that's a, it's a killer feature in my opinion. And it allows a lot of Ethereum projects to actually decentralize their front ends. So again, depending on the size of your build, this might take a little while. So sit back, grab your second cup of coffee and wait. So um, everything has been uploaded, pretty cool. So now we can actually access the interface using the link provided here at the end of the um, deploy logs. And as you can see, we now actually do have, oops, a Uniswap front end deployed on the internet computer. And you could log in and swap and do whatever you want. All right, pretty cool already. But as you may have noticed, this link here, or this link here, they're actually the same, to access my satellite that contains the Uniswap interface is a bit weird and it looks scary and fishy. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to add a custom domain to your satellite, or to the static front end that you deployed inside your satellite. And therefore, again, we are heading to the great documentation. We are heading over to hosting and we are reading the section about 
custom domain support. So what we have to do is we have to start a custom domain wizard from the Juno console host hosting page and then enter the desired domain name for our satellite. All right, let's do that. We can click on done here because we are done. By the way, there are also a couple of nice tutorials down here that you might want to check out. So let's head over to the hosting section of our satellite and now click on the custom domain button. And I bought a domain and I coined a new term. I call it a DUI, a decentralized user interface. So the domain is DUI on the ic.xyz. So now we have to configure our DNS. There are actually uh, guides available. Uh, if you are stuck, if you don't know how to do that, there is a guide for, um, one second. Da, da, da. Here, for Namecheap and for GoDaddy that you can follow. I actually bought my domain um, on Namecheap. So, this is the guide that you would follow if you were interested in how to set this up on Namecheap. But if you've done this before, it's pretty straightforward. So, I'm going to move this window down here. Let's see. All right. So, those are the host records that are currently set. I'm going to replace them with um, what Juno tells me so for txt i'm going to add canister id whoops so this is going to be a key txt and the host is canister id and the value is this here um next cname record Stays at and we add ICP one dot IO. Just copy pasting this, and we're going to add a new record again, a C name record, ACME challenge. Copy this one, paste it here. Let's set those to automatic, and save all the changes. So now that we set the um, records in our DNS settings on Namecheap, we are going to click ready here. This will do some magic behind the scenes. If you want to know the manual steps, you can head back to the custom domains page and actually check out the manual steps that would have been required that Juno actually takes away for you. Now we can close this and as you can see it's still a pending order. If we are interested in what pending order actually means, again we can head back to the documentation, we check for status and it says that the registration request has been submitted and is waiting to be picked up. So now time for your third coffee. Let's wait until our registration has been picked up and processed. All right, so the status here changed from pending to available, and now we can try out our new custom domain by simply visiting it. This DUI on the IC.xyz. And with that, as you can see, it works, and now we got rid of this scary looking URL um, and we still have a front end served from a canister or served from a blockchain. With that, thank you for um, the attention. If you have any questions, I encourage you to check out our developer documentation. You can find that on the docs.internetcomputer.org. Another very cool website is our forum, which is forum.definity.org. You will find a lot of questions answered there and there are a lot of really, really helpful people that can help you out. Um, another resource is the uh, awesome internet computer.
repository which contains a lot of really really nice things that um, have been collected and uh, made available in this single markdown page another thing if you use motoko for your backend is this awesome motoko list which has a couple of nice libraries for motoko and other things um and yeah we also have a developer discord you can find the um, link to that if you go to the internet computer website and you scroll down all the way i guess and then there's a little button here with the discord logo you click on that and it should invite you to this icp developer community discord server where you can also ask questions another really nice resource is the wiki page that contains um, in-depth resources for a lot of topics um, around the internet computer and i think there's also the internet computer for ethereum developers so this is a pretty nice article explaining the differences between the IC and Ethereum. With that, thank you for the attention and have a great day.